So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the chip clip from the 2 megabyte chip that I can successfully read and move it over to the 8 megabyte chip that I cannot read. So I go ahead and clip that on. And now I'm going to once again start the logic analyzer and then start the Dediprog and see what it sees. So I start up the Dediprog and it's trying to detect the chip but in this case it will actually fail. So we need to understand why that is because we've got some chip, we want to read it, we need to know how to work around that. So if we zoom out and see what we can see, what we see is a whole bunch of stuff that doesn't look right, not certainly compared to what we saw on the other 2 megabyte chip. In particular, we see the voltage is like spiking up and down. It's not just, uh, you know, staying high and using the chip. We don't see any sort of data analysis succeeding for this QSPY despite the fact that it seems to have processed everything. So it's not properly handling it. So let's focus on specifically where the clock was actually running. So let's zoom in on that. And well, that is just a single blip. So that is not very helpful. So the question is, you know, why is this data all looking so weird and bad? And the hypothesis, my first order hypothesis here, you know, the, the short answer is I didn't know. Like I, I had encountered this kind of thing many times in the past, but I didn't have a logic analyzer, so I couldn't dig into it further. Now that I do have a logic analyzer, I can. And so in this particular case, I'll show you how I worked through uh, trying to find the likely cause of this and then finding a workaround. So my hypothesis here was that perhaps the Dediprog, while it was providing power to the chip, was powering up other components on the chip, which then were doing other spy transactions on the spy bus, which was conflicting with the Dediprog's ability to actually identify the chip. You can certainly see that, you know, it doesn't look like it was succeeding in doing any clock cycles, so perhaps this was, you know, something was holding the, the clock low so that it couldn't properly signal. Perhaps something was messing with the voltage, but even beyond that you can see there's all sorts of signaling on this data quad 3, data quad 2, data quad 0. Uh, so it's just very suspicious and weird that you'd see all this traffic that does not seem to be the kind of traffic that would be caused by the Dediprog itself. So in order to test this theory, what I said was, okay, if I've got the Dediprog and if it's providing 3.3 volts, then I want to see whether 3.3 volts is actually going to cause something to power up on the system. Now in this particular case, because I had closed out the Dediprog and reopened it, it wouldn't necessarily be providing any voltage up front or, you know, the it may not be providing 3.3 volts certainly because the configuration had been dropped from the previous chip we were reading. So to understand like what it's actually providing, we have to look at its configuration. And here you can see that it is defaulting to 1.8 volts in this particular case. And I know from the data sheet that this other chip that I'm trying to read but not succeeding in, this is another 3 volt or 2.7 to 3.6 volt uh, spy flash chip. So 1.8, first of all, just isn't going to get the job done. So the first thing we might try to do is like bump the voltage up to, well, 2.5 is too low because the data sheet says it only goes as low as 2.7. And 3.5, okay, that's within the range, you know, up to 3.6, so we could use that. Now, I'm using the Dediprog SF600+, Plus, so I have this full uh, voltage, more granular uh, sort of adjustment. You, if you're using something like a SF100, may not actually have that. So for now, let's just go ahead and try this uh, 3.5 volts, and let's just try it again and see if we see any different or better results. So we start the logic analyzer as before. And then we go back to the Dediprog and we hit detect. We see there's some sort of activity in the background, looks like errors. And then ultimately this is going to time out and that's not going to work either. Okay, so what do we see here? Well, we see a whole bunch of more garbage. We see uh, stuff that can't properly decode, but actually we do see some stuff that does decode. So let's, you know, zoom in on that. Maybe it somehow successfully got something through. Well, first of all, I can see that there's, you know, a little bit too much up and down signaling going on here. Yes, it is ultimately successfully encoding 9F, but uh, there's some spurious, um, some spurious signaling within there. So if I uh, go on to the next thing, well, I would want to see something like the EF, right? But I don't actually see that. 
Same thing here. Again, there's a 9f, and then there's something right after it, but that something is zeros. So that's not helpful. Again, we're just seemingly pretty much getting garbage. And so my theory is the power being presented to the system by the DETI prog, in this case, explicitly 3.5 volts, uh, explicitly configured, explicitly applied, is not actually seem to be doing what we expect.